it's such a cold rainy day here in the middle of July that it was even just 17 degrees here in the greenhouse. Crazy! But I'm still going to pop outside in between the showers to pick a bowl of summer sunshine. I'm just doing the squeeze test here. If there's a bit of give, it's ripe and ready to be picked. The rain meant I had to work really quickly, <laughs> but here they are. They're quite a good size. They're nice and golden, these ones. Depending on the cultivar, you get different colors. I have some that are red as well. They have been very, very small this year. But what I wanted to do right now, actually, is just show you how they are, have a little taste test, and also show you something interesting that I find interesting anyhow. We're out having a look at the area where I have my Logan berries here, which are still ripening. So big, look at them, big berries. And my little beautiful hardy kiwis, or kiwi berries, or cocktail kiwis, or baby kiwis, so many names for them. They are doing really poorly this year because it's been so very cold. And they're super hardy, but of course it was really, really cold when they were in full bloom. The flowers are so tropical and so sweet smelling and so beautiful, but there weren't any pollinators out and about. It was just far too cold for that, so not many of them have set, sadly, but there are a few. And I just thought it'd be fun to show you just how similar they are to European gooseberries. I've got one here to compare. I mean, not in size yet, because the, these kiwi berries are far from ripe. They're going to be ripening. They tend to be ripe anyhow, usually in September. We've got several months now to go. There's some bigger ones up there. There are a few, but I mean, usually it's full. This one is an Isai, so it's um, one that can produce fruit without a pollination partner. But I do want to get it one, like a pollination partner, and I've been looking for one because then they're supposed to produce even more. Usually, of course, it does produce a lot more than now because it's been a weird year, but it'd still be nice to give it a little partner, I think. It'll be a male partner then because this one obviously flowers and fruits. Yes, but I wanted to show you just how similar they are because in Denmark, where I come from, um, these kiwi berries are called Stigelsberg kiwi and Stigelsberg is the Danish word for gooseberry and so they are called gooseberry kiwis because they are, I mean, they do really have such a similarity to them. I wouldn't say the flavor is the same, but if you leave the gooseberries to ripen for too long, they do get like a, a kind of sickly sweet taste, whereas I like them when there's just a bit of give to them, as there is now and they're nice and jelly-like and super sweet, and they still have a little bit of tartness to them, so. But yeah, just thought it'd be fun to show you how my, <laughs> how poorly my beautiful kiwi berries are doing. They're still such lovely, lovely, lovely berries. And such fun to have in the garden. Let's go inside and taste this European gooseberry. One more funny thing to note before I taste the gooseberries is that I also have what's known as Cape gooseberries, these beautiful orange things here. They are super flavorsome too, um, but people always compare them to gooseberries too. I don't really know why. There's no similarity in flavor or anything, but I suppose they're quite large berries. Maybe that's where the word comes from. Just like goose eggs are usually the biggest eggs, so maybe that's why these ones are big or called gooseberries. Not really sure. But let's open a gooseberry up. I've opened two up in two different ways. And as you can see, they just look so much like a seedy grape, don't they? That's what I always think of. But they do have a very different flavor. Um, I'll taste one and just let you know what, what I think. <laughs> just a really, really nice, well-balanced flavor. It's got so much sweetness because it's picked at the right time. And even though we haven't had much sun, it's still done so well. But of course, there is also that acidity there, that tartness that we all like. So yeah, it's just a really beautiful, wonderful summery berry so yeah really really nice so easy to grow um as i've shown in videos before this year um, my other gooseberries i have two other ones which are just in a big jumble of, of thorns really and they produce green ones and red ones beautiful ones but this year they have not done very well because again of the weather and they were also attacked by a bunch of little gooseberry sawfly, a specific sawfly that targets gooseberries and just eats all the leaves. So they were not looking very happy this year, but the best way to prevent them is to clean out the ground surrounding the bushes. So I'm going to do that and make sure everything's really nice and 
and clean and try to feed the plants up again to get them really strong because the stronger they are the more they can resist bugs and sawfly. I don't use any spray or anything in the garden so I won't be doing that. Just try to help the plants out a little bit as much as possible and the sawfly don't really damage that much. They just eat the foliage which does weaken the plants but we still get some berries and we would have had a much better crop if it wasn't for the weather. So with that said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this a little bit interesting. I do really love this time of year when we're out picking berries come rain or shine. Hopefully we'll get some more sunshine soon. We haven't had that much yet. And we are in the very middle of July now, so we need to start heating up soon. It's nearly time for summer holidays. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.